good afternoon from Istanbul. And I want to say good morning or good evening other parts of the uh, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to, <clears throat> first of all, I would like to thank to you for kind invitation and uh, for this wonderful organization. Uh, let's talk about the skull base anatomy. And uh, skull base anatomy is a complex and uh, intricate structures. And this complexity uh, poses the challenge uh, neurosurgeons. And skull is, uh, can be divided neurocranium and viscerocranium. And neurocranium also can be divided calvaria and skull base. Skull base is, uh, is a part of the inferior of the uh, skull and uh, calvaria is the top of the skull base. And several bones uh, comes together and uh, comes together and makes skull base. And let's, uh, let's uh, a general aspect of the skull, uh, we see the frontal bone. Frontal bone is houses frontal sinus and contributes the orbital part of the skull. And you see the nasal bone. Nasal bone is a, a makes a bridge of the nose. Maxillary bones you see here and makes the part of the face and mandible and zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone is com, uh, contributes the lateral wall of the orbit and also the max together uh, arcus zygomaticus and sphenoid bone. Sphenoid bone is important structure of the skull base. You see the here greater wing of the sphenoid and lesser wing of the sphenoid. Between OAS, superorbital fissure is seen and the lesser wings and the body of the sphenoid, you see the optic canal. And laterally, you see the lacrimal bone is not part of neurocranium, but is part of uh, viscera, viscerocranium and ethmoid bone. Ethmoid bone also is important part of the neurocranium. And laterally, we see the paired parietal bone and part of the calvaria. And if you see the frontal bone and uh, maxillary bone, zygomatic bone, and sphenoid greater wing you see here. And we, we see also the temporal bone and occipital bone. We see all parts of the bone and mandible and pterion. Pterion is an important landmark. We use many surgical approaches. And pterion is, comes together many sutures and like a H, H shape and together makes pterion. Uh, uh, spheno, sphenoparietal suture, frontosphenoid suture, parietosphenoid suture, and temporosphenoid suture makes pterion. And pterion, meningeal branch of the uh, arteries cross the pterion, and during the trauma, uh, we, we see uh, epidural hematoma. And last, Later, uh, posteriorly, we see in the occipital bone, sigmoid suture and lambdoid suture. And let's go to the skull base. Skull base, skull base is ha ha uh, have a two phase, endocranial phase and exocranial phase. Endocranial phase is seen, uh, uh, can be divided anterior fossa, middle fossa and posterior fossa. In the anterior fossa, you see here, and middle fossa, you see the here, each part, and also the posterior fossa. Exocranial part of the surface, many muscles attached to here and complicates the skull base. And also, as I told before, the endocranial surface of the skull base can be subdivided three parts. 
these are anterior fossa, middle fossa, and posterior fossa. Anterior fossa is composed of frontal bone, ethmoid bone, and lesser ring of the sphenoid bone. And anterior fossa's boundaries starts anteriorly, uh, anteriorly the frontal bone and anterolaterally also the frontal bone. Posterior border is bounded, uh, posterior margin of the lesser sphenoid vein. And medially is the uh, anterior border of chiasmatic sulcus, also the bordered anterior fossa. And anterior fossa contains the olfactory bulb and, <coughs> sorry, cerebral hemisphere of the frontal lobes. And uh, let's go to the anterior fossa, zoom in. You see here the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone. Ethmoid bone uh, has a many holes and olfactory bundle seats the cribriform plate and bundle goes this hole to the nose. And uh, another part of the Cristagalle is also the ethmoid bone part and extending superiorly to the uh, cerebral hemisphere and attached to the falx cerebri. And we see the uh, anterior of the Cristagalle, we see the cr frontal crest. And ethmoid bone is contributes many structures, also medial wall of the orbit, and you see the uh, anterior, anterior and posterior uh, ethmoidal foramina, optic foramen, also optic canal and superior orbital fissure we see the here. And when we look at the ethmoid bone uh, superiorly, we see the crystagalli and cribriform plate and et, a labyrinth. Labyrinth has a ethmoid air cell and also lateral wall of the <coughs> It might as part of the medial wall of the orbit. You see the ethmoid bone also articulates many bones. And here is the articulates with sphenoid. You see this sphenoid bone, greater wing, lesser wing, and crystal and perpendicular plate, plate of the ethmoid bone divides the nasal septum and also the pterygoid process of sphenoid bone. And let's zoom in the anterior fossa. We see the planum sphenoidale. Planum sphenoidale is connects between two lesser wings. And below this structure, we see the uh, sphenoid sinus. And let's go to the other part of the anterior cranial fossa. We see the anterior clinoid process. Anterior clinoid process is important landmark of our surgical applications. And the lesser wing of sphenoid goes down and forms the anterior clinoid at each side of the anterior fossa. And the medial part of the anterior fossa, we see this, this edge is limbus of the sphenoid, uh, limbus of the sphenoidal, and also the anterior margin of chiasmatic Silcus. And let's totally, when we look to anterior fossa, we see the frontal sinus and frontal sinus, posterior wall of the frontal sinus is an is an uh, anterior border of the anterior fossa. When we go to the down, we see the frontal crest and uh, we see the foramen secum. There are many, there are many openings uh, from the anterior fossa to other structures. Firstly, we see the foramen secum. The foramen secum is opens to the nose and superior sagittal sinus in emissary veins. Sometimes it, it uh, ends blindly. And you see the crystagalli ends attached to the uh, fox cerebri. And there are uh, cribriform plate and many holes and the olfactor nerve bundles goes to the nasal cavity. And as I told before, also anterior and 
posterior ethmoidal foramen and it goes the arterial and vein. Let's go to the middle cranial fossa. Middle cranial fossa is wider than the anterior fossa and deeper than the anterior fossa, mainly uh, formed by sphenoid bone, uh, sphenoid greater wing, body of sphenoid, and also the squamous part of the parietal uh, temporal bone and petrous part of the posterior aspect of petrous part of the temporal bone. And the medial is the limit is dorsum cella. And as I told you, in middle, middle fossa consists of two bones, sphenoid bones and temp temporal bones. Sphenoid bones is symmetrically and uh, resembles a butterfly. And temporal bones is also important structure house and uh, housing the uh, inner and middle ear also. And when we look at the, uh, this picture, we see the limits of the middle fossa. And let's zoom in middle fossa. The limits of the middle fossa begins also the uh, posterior margin of the lesser sphenoid wing, medially is anterior uh, margin of the chiasmatic sulcus, and the posteriorly is dorsum cella, and laterally is going to the temporal, squamous, temporal, and uh, some part of the parietal bone, and posterior laterally is delimited the petrous part of the uh, temporal bone. As you see, the, in, the, in this area is petrous ridge, divides the petrous bone to face. This face is anterior surface, a part of the middle fossa, posterior surface is the part of the posterior fossa. And we, when we uh, look at the middle fossa, this some important structures. Firstly, we have to say tuberculum cella. We see the here tuberculum cella. And here is the uh, middle clinoid process. And you see the also anterior clinoid process and posterior clinoid process. And between the anterior and po uh, between the tuberculum cella and posterior clinoid and dorsum cella, there is a depression. The pituitary gland sits here. And the, uh, also the lateral of the pituitary gland and carotid groove also here. Each side in carotid groove is here. And this part is optic canal. Optic canal is uh, composed of the lesser wing of the sphenoid uh, and the body of the sphenoid. And the other part we cannot see here, but superior orbital fissure and inside, and we will see uh, later. And here is the Foramen rotundum. Rotundum, uh, uh, foramen rotundum connects the middle fossa to the pterygopalatin fossa and transmits this foramen V2. V2 transmits this foramen. V1 is goes to the superior orbital fissure. And then going to the uh, below, when we go to the below, we see the foramen ovale. Foramen ovale is a big holder in the middle fossa. And foramen ovale uh, uh, trans transmits uh, V3 to the inferior temporal fossa, infratemporal fossa, sorry. And we see the, another foramen, foramen spinosum. Foramen spinosum in middle meningeal artery branch is passed through inside. And we see the another foramen, irregular foramen is foramen laserum. 
Nasserum foramen is not a real foramen because the fibrocartilage tissue filled them, but uh, foramen lacerum uh, transmits the great superficial petrosal nerve and deep petrosal nerve it comes together and uh, forms the median nerve and median nerve is going to the median by the median canal to the pterygopalatine fossa. And let's see, let's see lastly the uh, superior surface of the petrous bone. We see the trigeminal, impressio trigeminalis, and the, as you know, the gasserian ganglion sit, sits here. And after the impressio trigeminalis, we see the elevation trigeminal prominence. We see the trigeminal prominence. In the posterior, the trigeminal prominence, we see the here and metal depression. And we uh, posterior lateral to the metal depression is arcuate eminence. Arcuate eminence is indicates the superior semicircular channels. And lastly, the uh, tegmen is a tiny part of the, this part is very thin and connects, uh, separates the brain the, from the uh, middle fossa. And uh, I want to show here the superior orbital fissure lastly, and superior orbital fissure between the greater wing and lesser wing. Uh, and as you know, uh, V1, trigeminal V1 ophthalmic, and uh, three, four, and six nerves, and superior ophthalmic when uh, transmits the orbital to, to the orbital cavities. And let's go to the posterior cranial fossa. Posterior cranial fossa between the foramen magnum and tentorium uh, cerebelli. And uh, we the mainly composed of the occipital bone and uh, petrous part of the temporal bone posterior face of the posterior face of the temporal bone and also mastoid angle mastoid part of the temporal bone contributes to the uh, forming the posterior fossa anterior limit is dorsum cella and posterior limit is uh, inner inner uh, uh, inner uh, inner crest of the occipital to the uh, to the uh, transverse sinus and let's go to the uh, another seeing the zoom and posterior fossa uh, starts uh, dorsum cella uh, and uh, forming the sphenoid part of the sphenoid part of the clivus and occipital part of the clivus we see in here. This part is the sphenoid part and upper to dorsum cella and posterior clinoid process. And we see the upper clivus and then middle clivus. Middle clivus is a part of the occipital bone and the, uh, also the lower clivus uh, lower third of the clivus you seen here and near the jugular foramen and uh, is the foramen magnum you see the uh, lower clivus and lower clivus and middle clivus together uh, called basio occiput and we see the petroclival fissure is an important uh, part of the posterior fossa. In this fissure, uh, inferior petrosal sinus extending to the jugular foramen to the si sigmoid sinus. And let's go to the other part of the uh, posterior fossa and internal auditory canal. We see the interior internal auditory canal 
and posterior phase of the uh, petrous part of the temporal bone. And let's zoom in uh, internal auditory canal. You see the internal auditory canal is here and jugular foramen is here. And we see the impressio trigeminalis also. And here is the carotid canal ends here. And we see the metal depression. And we see the uh, arcuate eminence. And we see the tegman is here. <coughs> this part of the posterior fossa, <coughs> internal acoustic meatus. And seven and eight and nervous intermedius transmits this uh, internal acoustic meatus. And internal acoustic meatus, posteriorly, we see here the vestibular canalicule is also. And then we see the groove is here, as this groove is sigmoid sulcus. And sigmoid sinus is. It runs along this groove to the parse, parse uh, venosa to the sigmoid sinus. And let's go to the other part of the posterior fossa. We see the jugular foramen. Jugular foramen is transmits many nerves and also the uh, sigmoid sinus and inferior uh, petrosal sinus. And we see, let's zoom in jugular foramen. You see the whole part of the jugular foramen and jugular foramen is posterior laterally, a little and posterior laterally to foramen magnum. And you see the jugular tubercule and it's important landmark. And we see the petrosal part of the jugular foramen and here, in this part, only the inferior petrosal sinus and cranial nerves nine goes here and middle part of the jugular foramen and 10 or uh, 11 nerves. And this part is pars venosa sigmoid sinus is going to the uh, here. And this is the sigmoid part of the jugular foramen, sigmoid sinus and jugular bulb is inside here. And the other part of the jugular foramen, occipital process and uh, temporal process and occipital process dividing the jugular foramen. And we see the hypoglossal canal, hypoglossal canal is a anterolateral of the uh, jugular foramen and the hypoglossal canal, uh, the 12 nerves is going to inside. And the uh, largest foramen of the posterior fossa is foramen magnum. Foramen magnum uh, housing the medulla oblongata and anterior and posterior spinal artery and vertebral arteries, and also the uh, accessory nerve spinal parts housing. And lastly, we see the totally the posterior fossa, jugular foramen you see here. And here is the occipital squamous part of the occipital bone. And you see the each side foramen magnum. And here is the condylar part. And uh, I want to uh, consider again the sigmoid sinus is this groove, and you see, and the, uh, here is the transverse sinus. Each side transverse sinus continuously, and uh, as a, uh, at this angle continuously uh, as a sigmoid sinus and goes to the jugular foramen. And here we see the, also the um, occipital crest and internal protuberance of the uh, interna. And uh, let's be look skull-based exocranial surface. 
mostly most part of the occiput you see here and the other part of the exocranial surface we see the occipital part and, and condyles and mandibular uh, fossa also styloid process you see and you see the carotid canal and foramen ovale and the, and other parts of the uh, exocranial surface and vomer and sphenoid uh, bone and pterygoid process we see you, this part is important here is the infratemporal fossa infratemporal fossa many surgical uh, approaches uh, making this fossa and you see the temporal bone is a big part of the exocranial surface you see the petrous apex each side and mandibular fossa styloid process and carotid canal we see and little part of the parietal bone and also the condylar process and we see the palatine bone palatine bone is an is not part of the neurocranium, is a part of the viscerocranium and sphenoid. And I want to show again here is the infratemporal fossa here. This, this limitation is infratemporal fossa. And you see the vomer and maxillary part and petroclival fissure, the exocranial surface. You see the here, petrous apex and clivus and this is the jugular foramen occipital condyle and here is the foramen lacerum ovale you see and here is the vidian canal we can see here the temporal part of the exocranial surface i wish everyone uh, su many successful surgeries in the light of anatomy thanks for your attention Thanks, Professor uh, Musa, for uh, this informative, uh, nice lecture. Uh, is there uh, any question from panelists? 